Some of the strongest, most direct passages that we have against once saved, always saved are in the book of Hebrews. Now, we don't know who wrote the book of Hebrews. Some speculate it was Paul, although a lot of the evidence runs against that. Uh, some say it was Barnabas, and they speculate about everyone. I just leave it as the author of Hebrews. We're going to address once saved, always saved, and we're going to look at passages that refute that. This is a series we've been doing, and this is the next one in the series. Hebrews 12, 14 through 17. Read with me in the King James, Hebrews 12, 14 through 17. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person, as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Very powerful passage. Holiness. Let's have a look at that word. So I had to translate actually that that clause. Um, keep in mind that holiness means terrifyingly cleanness. And the terrifyingly cleanness, not apart from, no one will see the Lord. So if you are have a space, that's what it literally means apart, not a space separating. So you cannot even have a space separating between you and terrifyingly cleanness. If you do, you will not see the Lord. This is very specific and extremely strong. Not even a space between you and terrifyingly cleanness. Because without, it's not without, it's not apart from, not a space from, Terrifyingly uncleanness, no one will see the Lord. Wow. Look, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Let me check that out. That means fall short of. Looking diligently, lest any man fall short of the grace of God. Like not live up to it. Why? Because if you don't live up to the grace of God, you will not be saved. Something will cause you not to live up to the grace of God. That's the implication, because it says, lest any root of bitterness spring up, springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. And then it goes into a list of uh, two sins, fornication and profanity, uh, being profane person, uh, as Esau, and what he did for selling his birthright. So it's about losing the birthright again, the inheritance. And so if you, if you fall short of the grace of God, you're going to lose your inheritance because you've allowed something to grow up. It's a kind of bitterness, most likely towards the Lord, that you don't care about his inheritance. And that's demonstrated in your actions. So that's what this whole thing is pointing towards, this passage. You have, you've lost the respect for the inheritance. And you've allowed this bitterness to grow up between you and God because you're not getting what you want to fulfill your flesh. And that's the Esau part. And that bitterness that's growing up causes you to not live up to the grace of God. That uh, failing, that, that verb, is to like be under, like a comparative under, like you're not at where you should be, you're too low, you're too too down on the ground, you should be standing up to a certain height, and you're not. And it's in such a way where you've you failed. 
And it demonstrates that here that no matter what he did afterwards, even crying, he could not get his inheritance, his birthright. When he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. He found no place of repentance. Why? Because he allowed this root of bitterness to spring up and to cause him to fall short of the grace of God. Now you tell me after this that actions don't matter in your salvation. They absolutely matter. And if you're not paying attention to your actions, then you are going to be lost. You're going to be damned. You will not be saved. You've got to be careful. You've got to measure yourself and see, are you living up to the grace that God has given you? Because remember, the grace is an accounting. It's like a credit. And you, when you come in, you have to live up to that. That's why Jesus said, count the costs. That's why Jesus told him, let the dead bury the dead. Man who puts his hand to the plow is not worthy to follow me. All of these things are not the easy, once saved, always saved that's preached, where you don't have to do anything but utter some magical incantation to be saved. And once that event has happened, that little brief event, you're home, you're safe. You don't have to worry about anything. That's not what these passages are saying. One after another, we've demonstrated. If you are sinning, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's clear as day. So now you're equipped with some very clear passages and strong ones that you can put in front of them as a testimony. Remember, you're not trying to convince them. You're testifying to them. And what they do with that will, will determine how that testimony works in the end for them. If they reject that testimony and continue in their wicked ways with the doctrine of demons. I proved that already. It's a doctrine of demons. I proved it. Then that will stand as a testimony against them, what you've said. If they are cut to the heart and repent and recognize the truth of the testimony of God, then that, what you said, will stand as a testimony in their favor at the final judgment before God. So either way, you're just testifying to them, and you must testify truly, truthfully, straight about it. You have to be very reliable in how you testify, testify to them. You're not trying to convince them. You're trying to testify to them before the Lord, in front of His presence, so that in the end times, that testimony will stand as a marker either for them or against them based on how they related to that testimony. May the Lord bless you as you seek Him with all your heart. Remember to subscribe down below and like the video and share it on your Facebook and other social media. And then make a comment, whether a question or a comment. We read all of them and we try to respond to all. Get on over to our website the Rooted Word, and start reading the translation and also the articles we've posted. It's at therootedword.com, therootedword.com. And may the Lord bless you as you seek Him with all your heart.